And then uh, let's go to our uh, Sephiros, which is our wind power model. So here uh, we are using uh, uh, wind speed at uh, different uh, heights, uh, which are then uh, interpolated uh, to to one depending on your hub height. And we are using air pressure and temperature so that we can include uh, density. And then we use uh, relative humidity as well. So this um, worth noticing is that we are using different weather here than that we are using in in the load electricity load uh, forecasting and uh, input parameters for the turbines are rotor diameter hub height uh, you have historic production of course from and then uh, also coordinates so that you know where where this is and uh, max uh, output then we can for our series um, we can make a forecast here for uh, on turbine level we can make them on wind park level or whatever uh, you wish on whichever level you wish to make the forecast for and uh, also uh, you can uh, with our scheduling tool you can set the availability for each time series you can set this manually uh, so and you can set it uh, automatically and you can also have your uh, use an auto schedule if you have a series that is monotonically increasing in output uh, range so if it's a wind park that is growing for example you can this is a way of, of, of letting uh, letting uh, the model know that it you can use longer periods of data as well because it knows when how much was available at any given moment and the availability uh, tool is set so that you can uh, for example if you have maintenance scheduling this is you can do it set it here that you know that say uh, six out of ten turbines will be uh, will not be used during uh, next week then you can set that in your schedule you can set them uh, to zero so that you will know and you can do this also for uh, later on so that you can so that the data historical data would be representable so that the model know that even though it blew or it was a lot uh, very windy uh, we didn't have that much uh, production but that might be because you have uh, because the availability was not 100% so that's why it's good to set in retro aspect as well and you set this uh, here in the home tab you have this small calendar and then and he, there you go into this tool I can show you a little bit we can show you now maybe so now uh, if we go to home you have this calendar here so here you manage your scheduling items so here we have marked uh, we have wind park one, we have wind park two and three different uh, sites. And you can see that these are the ones that are marked here as well. So you have you can manage your availability for all your time series in this way. And if you you have your uh, calendar here, so you can move backwards or forwards, choose which week you, you want to be on um, and then you can if we want to make a new uh, item create a new schedule item just double click on it and then you can set start time you can set end time how long it will go on for if it's not an all-day event you can set it for only half a day for example uh, you can set it to be only once or you can set it to repeat every uh, for whatever if, if it's a repetitive maintenance or something preventive maintenance or something then you can set it to repeat for that time uh, you can choose uh, what type of item it is 
if it's a bound to max, you set a new max and it, it won't ever go over that. Uh, you can downscale it so then to a max, so then you set a new max and then you will reduce the forecast to that new uh, max and you can downscale it with reduction and then you look at the forecast and say that you want to reduce this forecast with so and so much. Uh, priority uh, here for history and forecast, you have high, low, a high meaning that it will prioritize this item higher than the automated uh, schedule and if it's low it will prioritize the automated schedule item higher than this one. If you have a warning it will also let you know uh, when it's so you will get a notification and here you can set your new out, max output and if you have if you also you can set here available turbines so here you can set for example four out of six or something else and you can also do this for multiple series at the same time by holding in control and pushing them and in the same way just double clicking so so you can do it for multiple series at the same time as well Okay. Okay. Then uh, let's move on. Sephiros model. So it uses uh, a statistical S-curve uh, model. So it it will plot and train and uh, use non-linear regression to find uh, find a uh, different power curves for for different sites uh, different and different uh, wind directions and also for different weather suppliers and this then you can you can choose to, to train it once or also you can choose to retrain it always using the latest data or or looking at the more seasonal uh, data and you can also use your uh, real-time uh, correction for intraday forecasting here you, that is very much like the the one that I uh, explained earlier uh, you have multiple uh, weather uh, forecast providers so you can have up to five different weather suppliers uh, could be used and then weighted together and this is good because uh, different weather suppliers uh, have different strengths some might be strong on the intraday forecasting some might be strong on uh, longer forecast they have different range if you want to make longer forecasts and so on and this um, so and also having more you can then let the you can evaluate them and you can weight them together to make an optim, optimal weighing for your for your uh, weather forecast uh, and this you can do for for the uh, oil oil and cilia models uh, as well and when you use uh, when you want to connect a weather station you can just connect connect them in the forecast properties windows or you can use our uh, the you can use weather client to make it manually to find the closest one and to connect it with the closest one in our database or you can also use the auto search function to find and connect the closest available weather station and also to, if you don't have it you, it will create it in AFS and do basically all all the work for you yeah, yeah. and it makes this forecast on also in different uh, time intervals so you can set multiple time intervals so you can have one forecast for one from the first hour to the 12th hour and then another from the 12th to the 24th and so on and we there is another educandi video on this as well going more into detail on on settings for when you're making the 
the first training of your model and the settings for when you're making the evaluation in the extracts so I recommend you to to watch to watch that one if you want to go more into the details in the in those training uh, settings but for for this I will also show you how it looks in the configuration so uh, again you go to the config tab then you can go to a wind series that is using using the Sephiros model um, we have our model again here and then our weather stations are then connected here so here you want to to connect to it and here it's important to use the right type of weather so because it's a different type of weather than it's for, for the for the load forecast and then we're using uh, if you're going to the model properties here so here you have the Sephiros uh, model uh, you have the training period so this one uh, can be set to if you want to to just look at the previous uh, data for the same year here for example we were looking only 120 days or it will be 60 days back but you can also set set this to two or and more narrow maybe if you want to for example 80 and you will have a more seasonal toning on it. Uh, then uh, you have the settings for your training period. And this uh, <coughs> is the settings for the nonlinear regression that uh, it's using the iterative uh, Levenberg uh, Marquardt uh, minimization. And uh, since it's an iterative nonlinear regression, uh, you can also set uh, a max iterations. Uh, the epsilon GFX, uh, it sets the stopping uh, criteria for it. And uh, here you can also choose to, to how many uh, how many wind sectors you want to have so so you can have you can have, uh, as I told you, you can have. You will have a different power curves for different wind directions, and this is a good thing because different landscapes might have different uh, power curves for different wind directions, since you have, might have mountains in one size or something else. And you can set set it to have max uh, four uh, or some something else. How many you want? If you check the estimate optimal number of wind directions uh, sectors, the program itself will will choose how many to incorporate in the forecast. Otherwise, the program will use uh, this amount that you have written here. Uh, also, if you if you're lacking history uh, somewhat, you can also set uh, the model to use a standardized uh, power curve based on uh, installed capacity and this uh, then you put your your search window here to to minus 999 Sorry. Yes, and then you have your uh, same type of uh, check data requirements. That was for the load that you want to see that you have the the data necessary here of importance might be the weather forecast at least that you have 
good enough weather forecast uh, and then the installations for or the settings for the real-time corrections you have your turbine and farm properties so here you set your hub height the rotor diameters uh, the amount of wind turbines if you have a park you, or if this is just one single wind turbine you specify it here and uh, then you have your Uh, lower cut-in wind speed, upper cut-in wind speed, uh, lower cut-out wind speed, and upper cut-out wind speed. And this is that between the upper cut-in uh, upper cut -in speed and lower cut-out speed, the power curves will follow uh, an S-shaped curve, which is estimated uh, by the nonlinear regression. Uh, for wind speeds below the lower cut-in speed, uh, the forecasted production uh, will be zero. And between the lower cut-in speed and the upper cut-in speed, the power curve will increase linearly from zero up to the estimated uh, S-curve. Similarly, between lower cut-out speed and upper cut-out speed, uh, the curve will decrease down to zero again.